All right, folks, today I'm going to show you how to do forecasting using several different methods. We're going to use the polynomial trend line, a three month moving average, a four month moving average, and then a three month weighted moving average to predict the sales. At the end, we're going to determine which of these methods is the most accurate by figuring out which one has the lowest mean squared error, or MSE. As a reminder, I want to point out to you that the best predictor method is the one with the lowest mean squared error. Again, the best predictor method is the one with the lowest mean squared error. All right, so let's get started. Now, to the left in the Word document, you'll see that I have sales from January through December of the following year. So there's 24 months or 24 periods of sales here. Now these numbers are for a very small restaurant as you can see, I mean they only did $2,100 in January, but their sales are growing and so he's hoping for the best. All right. Now the easiest way to get this data from a, the Word to Excel is to simply copy it. So I'm going to click here, just copy the entire table, Command C or Control C, and I'm going to paste it here into the Excel document. Now, as we know, the very first method that we're asked to use here is the polynomial trend line. So the first thing we have to do in order for us to get that polynomial trend line of the third order that it asks us for in the Word document is to create a line or scatter plot. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, I'm going to expand the Excel document right quick just so that we understand what we're looking at. Okay. The way we do this is simple and easy. We're simply going to take all of the data from B2 to C26. We insert scatter plot and we pick the very first one. So we're going to insert a scatter plot. And as you can see, we already can begin to see a trend in our data. Okay? Now that's very important for us. By the way, you'll also notice that the axis goes from 0 to 5, 10, 15, 20. This is simply the period, so we know that month 1 is January, month 2 is February. Here in month 5, we're in May. Here we're in October. So, All right, so the next thing we need to do is click any of the dots, right-click, add a trend line. And you'll see now a blue dotted line has popped up. To make it easier to see, I'm going to change my line from a blue line to a red line. You don't have to do that in your project. I just do that to make it easier for you to be able to see. I go back to trend line options. I display the equation and the R squared value on the chart. Now let's go over what R squared means. You learned this in BUS 322 Business Analytics. But as a reminder, R squared is the coefficient of determination. Again, R squared is the coefficient of determination. That's how well the data fit the model. And in this case, the model is the red dotted line. That's our trend line. So using Y equals MX plus B, we see that as each month increases, our sales increase by about $52, $51.91. So the model tells us that we have an increasing linear trend, but the data only fit that model 27% of the time. That's what the R squared is for. And that's because we have these fluctuations in seasonality. So we do see a seasonal trend in that our sales go up and then back down toward the summer and then back up. So about every five months, our sales, about every 10 months, rather, our sales will go up, and then they'll go back down and then they'll go back up. See that? All right. Now, the problem asks you to change that trend line to a third order polynomial trend line. So the way we're going to do that is click polynomial and we'll click order 3. And now you can see that our trend line increases as the sales increase and decreases as the sales decrease. And we now have this equation that we can use to predict our sales. Now, the way we use this, is I'm going to copy this in just a moment, but the way we use this trend 
or this equation rather, is by simply taking wherever we see an X and that's going to be the period number. So we're going to tell Excel to put 1.7058 times 1 raised to the third power minus 5950 times X raised to the second power and so on. Now we call that our forecast. So we're going to come over to D2 and we're going to type forecast and we're going to label that FT. Okay, so we have our sales, YT, we have our forecast, FT, and T means time period. All right, so we simply take this equation and we plug it in right here. We say equals, open parentheses, 1.7058 times whatever time period we're in raised to the third power. And this part of the equation corresponds with the first order of our polynomial trend line. The second one we see has a negative sign in front, so we're going to say minus 59.495 times period 1 raised to the second power plus 592.91 times period 1 raised to the first power but we don't have to do that because any number raised to the first power is itself and so we don't have to worry with that plus excuse me, plus 1330.4. So when you're done, your equation will look like this. Now, you'll notice that in each case, the B3 refers to period part one here. And I left it in uh, a relative reference so that when I autofill down, it will simply pick up and tell me that period two, period three, period four. All right, so if you did it correctly, you should get 1865.52 for your first answer. Now I'm going to go ahead and take all of these numbers, turn them into dollar signs because we are working in dollars. The next step is to take the cell in D3, grab the little fill handle, and auto fill all the way down. So now we see that each of our forecasts are increasing as well. All right. So this forecast will follow what that red dotted line is. So far so good? All right. Now you'll know you got it right if in cell D26 you got $4,872.10. If you did not, go back here, double check your equation, and make sure that you have every one of these correct. Make sure that it's B3 raised to the third power. Make sure you have the uh, signs correct and so on and so forth. That's the number one thing that most students do incorrectly is forgetting to change the order of the sign. You can spot check yourself as well and you'll see that as you go down it changes and gives you whatever reference. So B11 here is for period 9 so on and so forth. Okay, And just as a reminder this is the third order polynomial trend line. Okay. Now, the next thing I need to do is figure out what my forecasting error is. Our actual sales in January of the first year were $2,100, but we forecasted $1865.52. That's the difference between this blue dot here and the red dotted line here. The blue dot representing the actual sales, the red dotted line representing the forecast. So we need to know how much of an error we actually made. And so what we're going to do is type error, and that's going to be my yt minus my ft. So here we're going to say equals yt minus ft, and then we're going to autofill all the way down. So we see that we actually had $234.48 more sales than what we forecasted. You'll see as you go down that some of them are negative. If the red line is above the blue line, you'll see a negative sign. 
if the blue line's above the red line, it's a positive. Now Excel, when you have the dollar sign or the accounting format turned on, a negative sign is in parentheses. Okay. The next thing we need to do is get rid of those negative and simultaneously magnify the error. So we're going to take this forecasting error, yt minus ft, and we're going to square it. So we're going to say yt minus ft squared. And we simply say equals e3 raised to the second power e3 raised to the second power. Now you'll see that you have these astronomically large numbers but that's okay. It's alright that you have the big numbers because what we want to do is magnify the error as big as possible. Look at it with a fine tooth comb and then if it's still as small as it can possibly be we know we have the best possible forecasting method. So for the third order polynomial trend line you see yt minus ft squared. All right, and we autofill all the way down. When you get these hashtags or dollar signs, it simply means that you need to expand the column size. So my column is not big enough to accommodate the number. All I do is go between f and g and left click and drag it to the right until the number fits in the column. Now you'll know you got it right if in December you get 327 297.49. It's a good point here to save your document, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want my column headings to look the same as the rest, so I'm going to come to C2, use the Format Painter, and then I'm going to paint that same format onto all of them so that you have blue background and white writing. Just makes it look a little better. And the last thing I need to do is compute my mean squared error or my MSE. The way I do that is by clicking cell F27, go to the auto sum function, pull down and find average. So mean or average are the same thing of course. So I want to find the average of the squared error, the mean squared error. Okay. And the MSE or mean squared error for the third order polynomial trend line is 115,451 rounded to the nearest dollar. Okay. I'll change that to blue just to make it stand out. And we have an MSE that's relatively low for this big of an error. So that's how you do the third order polynomial trend line with the graph so that you can see a visualization of your data at the same time. Now go ahead and save it again. The next step is to do the three month moving average. Okay. Now, we'll need the month, the period, the sales, forecast, so on and so forth. It's going to be exactly the same thing. The only thing we're going to do different is how we do our forecast. So because of that, I can simply take these numbers, copy them. So I'm going to highlight from A2 to F27, copy, and paste under the moving average. And again, I'm going to increase this so that we can see our numbers. To do a three-month moving average, I'm going to take the previous three months, January, February, and March, and I'm going to use them to predict what April's sales will be. So because I'm going to do that, I don't need the sales for January, February, or excuse me, the forecast for January, February, and March. Now, all I have to do here is average the sales between January, February, and March. So I'm going to say equals average, highlight J3 through J5, close parentheses. Equals average, J3 through J5, close parentheses. 
When I press enter, I should get $2,200. I then auto fill all the way down. And you'll notice that all of my other numbers change for me to give me an MSE here of 255,238. So again, use January, February, and March to predict April by taking the average of the sales. Then you auto fill all the way down. Then your error is the same as before. It's sales minus the forecast, auto fill, and then square sales minus forecast and auto fill again. Now you'll notice that we already know that the polynomial trend line is better than the three month moving average because it has a lower mean squared error. Now we'll move over, we'll copy this again. Okay. And we'll paste it here in column O. And this time we're gonna do a four month moving average. So we do four month moving average. So to do that, we're simply going to take January, February, March, and April and use that to predict May. Okay. So we don't need the sales here, so I'm going to delete that. So in this one, we say equals average. Highlight January, February, March, and April, Q3 through Q6. And we press enter. We know you got it right if it's 2275. We then auto fill all the way down. And you'll notice that we now have a much, much bigger mean squared error. So we know that we're going in the wrong direction. Maybe we need to step back a moment and think about this and make sure that we're moving and doing what we need to do. Well, there's another method that's a little more robust and a little easier for us to understand. Now, the when we did the three month moving average, we assumed that we were going to give equal weight to January, February and March. That is, we assumed that January sales were just as important as February and February was just as important as March. But we know that's not true. If we go back over here to the graph that we created, we know that we can't use January, February, and March to predict way here because this is just too far in the past. Think about it like this. Would you rather someone predict what your GPA is going to be based on what you did as a freshman? Or is it more likely that you have learned your lesson, figured out what you're going to do, and move forward? So what we want to do is take the three month moving average. We're going to copy all of this from H1 down to M27. Command C. We're going to paste it right here, right next to it. Okay. And this time, instead of three month moving average, it's going to be three month weighted moving average. Okay. Three month weighted moving average. And we're going to give different weights to January, February, and March. We're like, okay, well, what weight do I give to each one? We're going to go back to our Word document. And we find that we're going to use time period T as 0.8. T minus 1.15. T minus 2.05. So that is we're going to give March 80%. We're going to give February 15% and January 5%. Just so that I know, we're going to copy these over and we're going to paste it right here just to give me a quick reference. Okay. So we got T, minus, T is 0 0.8, 0 0.05, and 0.15. Now I'm going to take this number and I'm going to say 0 0.8 for 80% for March, 15% for February, and 5% for January. It doesn't matter the weights that you assign them. 
that will be an arbitrary number. There is a way to make sure that you get the absolute best weight, which I can show you in future videos if you're interested. But what we've done here is we've simply said that March is going to be 80%, February 15%, January 5%. We're going to multiply these weights times the sales and then add them up. So when we did the average here, what we were really doing was saying $2,100 times 33% plus $2,200 times 33% plus 2,300 times 33%. Here we're saying 21 times 5% plus 22 times 15 plus 23 times 80%. So we're weighting the average differently. And the way we do that is a different formula. It's called the sum product formula. So we're going to say equals sum product of the weights. And we want to make that an absolute reference. So we're going to say command T for a Mac or F4 for a PC. We want the weight to be an absolute reference. So the dollar signs or the string tells you this is an absolute reference of that. That way those don't change when we autofill. So we're going to multiply the weight times the number and then autofill. So your formula is equal sum product of U3 through U5 absolute times X3 through X5 relative. And here the number is 2275. Not much different than what we had here. Let's autofill and see what our final MSE is. Now here for this method we see that the MSE is 110,864. The one for the four month moving average was 375. For the three month was 255. And for the third order polynomial was 115. So of the four methods we've used, this method is the one that has the least error. This is the best predictor method because it has the lowest MSE. Let me say that one more time. The three month weighted moving average is the one with the best predictor method because it has the lowest MSE. So now we go back to our problem and we see that it says compute the MSC for each of the three above and this is the one we used. Which of the four methods is the best one? The answer is the three month weighted moving average. And we're going to use that method to predict the sales for January. Well all we have to do in order to get that done is to highlight and autofill one more period down. And we see that for January of the following year, period 25, we have predicted that our sales are going to be 4275. 4275. Okay. Let's go back to our chart now and take a look at this. We are predicting that our sales are going to go up. We're predicting that based upon this trend line and we think that they're going to continue to move up in that direction. We also know, however, from empirical evidence that we should be entering into a period of downward sales. So we notice that our upward trend line goes up, then down, then up. We're, we know from our common sense that we're headed for a downward trend. So we see here the same period. Our sales in December were 4,300. We see that we're entering into a downward trend, even though the polynomial trend line told us we should be going upward. So. This is why we go through this problem and make sure that we have all of these methods. Now there are other methods that are, you know, forecasting methods that you can use and so on and so forth, but these are the most common ones and they're relatively simple to you. So I will leave this last question for you. Was the benefit of the extra accuracy worth the time and effort that it took? Why or why not? Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks and have a great day.